Welcome to the Espouse Trico podcast. I'm Stephanie. I'm Mamie. And, and we are a... L-Y-S. So in? Montreal. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> we do like that every time. We should try that every It's like okay. when you were kids and you used to do twin talk with yeah. your best friend. Yeah. And you were twins. Yeah. So this is our, uh, our YouTube podcast and um, we have some really exciting stuff to share. Lots of exciting things coming up some of which we're wearing, so we could just jump straight in. To what we're wearing? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Who's going first? Um, you. Okay. Uh, I am wearing the channel sweater by me, Stephanie Earp, uh, and it is a pattern in our upcoming book. Should I show this now? Yeah. So we've been teasing this for a little while. Oh, um, I'm going to try to avoid the reflection, which might mean blocking Steph's face. Okay. Excuse me for a moment. Keep talking about okay. this. Um, so yeah, we've been teasing this for a little bit. We've been working on it for over a year, or just about a year. Um, it is our first book collection. It features 15 patterns, uh, five by you, mm -hmm. five by me. One of mine's a collaboration. Mm -hmm. And then the other five patterns are from our amazing team here at Espace Tricot, some of our former teachers, some of our current teachers, our current staff. So it really is like a it represents us and our shop and our team, and it's all yarns from our shelves uh, and from the shelves of your LYS as well, I expect, wherever that might be. So that book is available for pre-order now. It's called Knits from the LYS, um, and it's going to be out on December 15th. And we are just over the moon with the result. It was a very a close and it felt long, but it, like looking back on it, it was like pretty much a year that it all came together, collaborating with Lina Magazine or Lina Publications to release it. And they just have such an incredible uh, reputation and like proven uh, oeuvre of magnificent publications. So it's just such an honor and a thrill. And we can't wait to see the real thing in our in our hands, the physical yeah. book. That like, we right. we've, everything we've always done has always been digital, and there's something... We have an ISBN number. <laughs> no, it's ah, so cool. ISBN yeah. number. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that book is at print now, so we don't we don't have a physical copy to show you yet. We um, just have... This is a beautiful cover. I don't... To me, it's looking like um, it might be, like, backwards, like, mirror image. Anyway, maybe. if you can't read. But we show the real thing. The real thing is this... This is one of the and that's patterns. one of the patterns, the Winkle Mitten. That's one of my designs I'll talk about in a second. And LYS, if you're not familiar with the acronym, is Local Yarn Store. It's a little um, acronym abbreviation that has sort of come up out of, into being over, I don't know, several years. Yeah. I don't know where it first came from, but it uh, just conjures up that dreamy idea of just popping down yeah, to a local yarn, yarn shop. Um, again, whether that might be online, near you, um, special destination visit, anything like that, this book came out of uh, wanting to encompass the experience of, of visiting a yarn store, um, meeting the people there, be it staff, teachers, other knitters, and um, all the sorts of things that you can pick up in, in sharing tips and tricks and, and discussing our passions together. Yeah, so um, back to this particular pattern. <laughs> um, this is a top-down uh, drop shoulder sweater. So it starts here with like a funnel neck and you come down and, and build out all of the, uh, the shoulder and you do a couple little short rows, knit flat for the armhole and finish, uh, go down and then pick up the sleeves and knit down. So super duper simple. And my inspiration really was that we at, at Espace Tricot have a lot of really solid like raglans and yokes and um, and raglans and raglans and raglans <laughs> uh, so I was like I, I feel like it would be fun to put another standard out there but with a drop shoulder uh, silhouette so my version is knit in snuff nug uh, in this color here which is called soul sort um, with make it rainbow which got discontinued or at least temporarily discontinued sadly after I knit the sample so we knit another one that's why I'm holding up this one so this one is in the snuff number with the make it tweed which we've talked about a lot how much we love this yarn that adds a tweedy vibe to anything you want to hold it with and snuff nug is such a good base for the tweed too because it's just so fluffy it really absorbs the texture of it while letting the color pops and the tweedy nips shine through yeah it really kind of melts together to feel like one fabric so that's, um, that's one version of it. And then um, this is the other version, which is in this incredible Italian merino yarn called Prima uh, from DHG, uh, mm -hmm. which I don't see it like widely stocked, but any bulky weight uh, yarn, this is knit at 12 stitches over 10 centimeters. 
so it's super fast to knit and this one's like it's heavy it's this is what you want for winter so cozy it's also an unspun single ply bulky weight merino so um it's created this really dense fabric at 12 stitches which is a little tighter than this yarn recommends but this is a great pattern for something like um well several brands uh and yarn companies out there have single ply chunky weight yarns and we've stayed away from them a bit in the past because when they're recommended at sort of that six to eight stitch gauge they just pill and get used really quite quickly because there's it, the structure is too yeah. loose to really yeah. hold the yarn together so knitting them denser at like 12 like this then they're, they're lofty and light because of that single ply so you're not getting like a carpet yeah but it is knitted tighter than those yarns recommend which is going to give integrity and structure to the yarn and help it resist yeah and help it stick you know stand yeah. up to time so uh, I've, I've been wearing this sweater when I knew I was not gonna be <laughs> photographed or put on the internet too much because it was a secret but now the secret's mm. out and I have mm. one too in cream that I knit last Christmas and I I love it because it has all these memories of knitting it on the sofa the first Christmas I'd been back home in England for six years or so, seven years or something and I finally got back and I was knitting that all those memories into that sweater and knowing it was going to be part of this incredible book project so that's a really special yeah, garment for me too well and i do find that like you know you know me i love my knits like over the top and showing all the skill but when i wear this i get so many compliments on it um even from like my family who are used to my crazy knits and they're like oh that's a nice one where'd you buy it and i'm like ah <laughs> ha -ha, they think tell i you. bought it uh, which is interesting. I think we it talked has... a bit about that before. Is, yeah, like, the... is that a goal about your knit? Is that a standard of yeah. success? For many of us, it is. If you get, yeah. Why did you get your sweater? Like, if they can't tell it's handmade, um, yeah. that can feel like a badge of success. But I definitely, I think it's just got a classic and very, very now silhouette. So wearable. Yeah. And I'm going to be wearing mine more through, now that it's got colder as well, because Snuff Nug is just so cozy. Mine is cream with Make It Tweed, and it looks like a birthday confetti cake. birthday cake, like a box yeah. cake, like confetti box cake. Totally. Yeah. Okay, so that's this one. That's channel. Um, I think what we're going to do is over the next few podcasts, we'll feature different patterns. But for now, we're just going to do with what we're wearing or actually making. So over to you. Tell us about what you're wearing. So I am wearing, first of all, I'm wearing fingerless mittens because I'm very cold. These have <laughs> nothing to do with the book. These are the scariest mittens by Marie Wallen. I've shown this sample before. They're in Shetland Spindrift and I love them. But I will, you know, <laughs> fashion is pain. Um, I'll take them off for a second and show you the beach coma shawl. So this, um, again, has connection to um, traveling back to England. Um, I started an iteration of it on my first trip back there um, in three or so more years after the pandemic, right when we'd taken over and Stephanie, bless her, said, go on, be free. And I ran away two weeks after taking over to England, <laughs> like 10 days. Um, but it was an incredible trip and it uh, inspired this shawl, walking along the beach and seeing the different textures of the sea and the lines in the sand and the seaweed and everything. That's about as metaphorical as I get with my designs. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I decided to wear it to show you because it's quite a difficult construction to talk about by trying to tell you the dimensions. It's simple in concept, but I want to show it up for you to really see what's going on here. So it starts in the middle here and effectively this is a square like the center panel is a square just like open at one into at one corner i guess yeah works out in um one piece the striped section here and then at a certain point you put these stitches on hold for the bottom v and you put the other side stitches separately on hold and work this way out and then go back and work this way out and then pick up all along one edge and work a lace border so the lace comes out like that so it really is part way between a shawl and a wrap in a way that i find extremely wearable because i i do like v-neck v-shaped shawls but i just find they don't lie super perfectly on me for how i want them to so i just find this is a little different and interesting and how it falls. Yeah, because you've got all the length that you want for like a real yeah. shawl feeling that you can wrap and wrap and wrap without getting too much depth. You know, yeah. like if you made a triangle shawl that exactly. long, it would just be way There'd too be so much, much volume around the yeah. shoulders when it builds up. So yeah. 
And this version but, is knit with? This version is knit with Ulysse and Zalbo Wall, the DK long changing, long color changing yarn from, um, from Shuffle Waller. And uh, I forget the color names, but we'll have all the information. It's already on the Ravelry pages. All of these patterns in the book are up as previews. We're going to try adding our projects to project pages as we've done more of them. Each pattern we knit twice for each of our models, Chloe and Sasha, again, long-term uh, staff and collaborators with the store. So we were thrilled. They're such a great team. They have such a great energy together on yeah. camera. The photos were so successful. Um, we should mention the photographer, Julien Cardenal, who's local to us. Yona found his profile and we met up with him. He was fantastic. And Eva, the makeup artist, just made us feel like superstars. The whole photo shoot experience it was, was great. amazing. That's my tangent. But we'll link to their sites down below because he has beautiful work. And if you're local in Montreal, he has um, he has uh, shows on. And if you ever need a photographer, I don't know, highly yeah. recommended. So each of the patterns in the book we knit twice, aside from some of the mittens <laughs> yeah that's right. um so we'll get up project pages for those so you can see the different yarns yeah different used. color choices yeah. different yarn choices like a big part of sort of the theme of the book also was you know, a huge part of what people ask us when they come to the yarn stores about yarn substitution um and and how to make a pattern their own so it was an opportunity not just to show different sizes but to show like okay well like the other version of this is knit on 100 percent alpaca and mm -hmm. so it changes the drape. This has got a little bit of crisp to it, right? Mm -hmm. Versus the alpaca yeah. version is very, very drapey. Um, but they're knitted to exactly the same gauge and to the same, um, you know, finished measurements. Pattern, yeah. But they vibe really differently. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, same with what, the one we just showed you, right? Yeah. The, the, that heavy single ply merino versus a blown yarn like yeah. this one. Exact same pattern, completely different feel. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was part of the, part of what we were going for yeah. is like really make sure that we're communicating some of the stuff that we do communicate every day in the store when we're talking to people. And that was a really fun part in seeing what our uh, collaborating designers came up with because we asked them for suggestions for another. They obviously got to pick and design their pattern for the yarn that they chose, but we also asked them for ideas for a, for a second yarn and some of what they came up with is just fascinating in terms of how they conceptualize their design in two different ways. So we've got more information coming on those. I just moved this off screen because just having fingers there was a little odd. <laughs> it's a little but, weird. <laughs> um, I'll talk about this one quickly before we move on to other things, simply because it's the cover image. This is the Winkle Mitts, and it is just a fingerless, long mitten. Um, I echoed the uh, Old Shale lace pattern from the edge of the beachcomber. This is the sort of pattern that would always pop up somewhere in our knits when I was a kid, like in things mm -hmm. that got passed down to us that my granny and her sister were knitting um and so this comes in i did two sizes and this is with our uh happy four ply minis um mini skeins are fantastic for this kind of thing um the pattern obviously gives instructions for exactly each band they would be just as good i think in a single color i think they'd be really lovely or a fading color changing special skein but also such a great little stash buster if you're if you are knitting other patterns in the book yeah. or you know already have a shawl that you love mm -hmm. and you're looking for to add something this is the perfect way to kind of yeah. grab those colors and use them again in something that's really versatile plus uh, the book is out December 15th just in time for the holidays and Christmas and advent calendars so if you're getting minis um, this is a great project for those especially if you have like a 10 gram minis advent calendar Sometimes those are so beautiful and there are so many projects out specifically for that. But sometimes those 10 gram minis, you can be a little bit more of a, hmm, what do I do, do with, with this? this? And that will be enough for, for these. I think each color was used about 10, 10 grams. Yeah. But I only have one of them, so I'm going to put my other. You're going <laughs> to put your other ones back. back. So obviously we're super excited. We're going to keep talking about the book over the coming episodes and you'll see little pattern previews on Instagram and we've got, you know, we're adding our projects to Ravelry. But if you're looking for a pattern to knit right now, we also have a new yeah. set out as well. So let's have a look at those. Hold this. 
Okay, so you might recognize the Expo 67 cowl because we published this a little while ago. I think we did talk about it in our last episode. I believe we did, yes, because uh, this was one of our launch patterns for Jolly DK when we bought it out back in September. That's right. We had given some uh, test schemes to Jocelyn Malrick, a longtime teacher with us and also a designer in the book. We'll yeah. show her socks in a future episode. Um, so she came back with this absolutely incredible cabled colorwork stripe design which she has since also turned into a sweater which is absolutely incredible i don't know if we'll ever be able to write that up but uh yeah skulls <laughs> yeah so yeah she developed the cowl um it's called expo 67 and if you're familiar with the expo 67 you see it right away it's like this very specific geometric geodesic uh, geodesic sorry <laughs> or um, just because but... i know the buckminster <laughs> fuller um uh it was the architect yeah. of the American the United States display at the um, World's Fair in 1967, and, and it is called a geodesic dome, I believe. Geodesic dome. Okay. Yes. So, uh, but not at all surprising from Jocelyn, she decided to just keep going and keep playing with this. And so the next time we saw her, she brought us these beautiful mittens and this gorgeous hat. So uh, look at the detail in that inc incredible crown. So we decided, well, let's get these written up as well. And so all three are available together as a little ebook where you get all three patterns. The cowl remains a free pattern on its own. Uh, I thought that was the right mix because if you mm -hmm. just want to try it out, this is the simplest one. Obviously, it's just a tube and you don't have to make any increases or decreases. So if you're at all nervous about trying this out, uh, we are going to be combining stranded color work and cabling. This is the great one to start with. But if you're not a cowl wearer, that was hard to say. Cow -er. Cow -er. Um, You know, if you're more interested in hat and mittens, I think these are incredible. And also, Jocelyn is offering a class, an in-person class, uh, later this month in yeah, November. Yeah, if you're local, it is November 21st and 27th, 28th, one week apart. I believe it's on Wednesday evenings. You will find it on our website if you're local, on the classes tab, um, in our calendar format, you'll see it. And so that class contains the pattern, the ebook, the, um, the ebook e of all three patterns, so that you can choose which one to do in the class with Jocelyn, and she'll walk you through the whole thing. Um, we also have kits for these, and the pattern is included with the the kit as a set. So we, all the yarn you need to make all three of them, and uh, we have that just in the original colorways. But if you're buying yarn in different colorways um, to knit this, do drop us a note. We'll be happy to email you the yeah. the ebook as well. Yeah. So yeah, as Naomi mentioned, uh, Jocelyn has continued to develop this and is working on a fingering weight sweater. I think she's on her second sweater. I think she is on her second yeah. sweater. Um, and maybe at some point I'll talk to her about whether it can be graded and if it's possible, yeah. we'll, we'll look into it. Um, it's a raglan, so you can see how that could could happen. But I think that the nuances that we usually go for in terms of like just 1.5 to 2 inch difference between sizes because of the repeats might not be possible. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to look at how uh, successful it would be as a commercial pattern that we can recommend for a wide variety of sizes. It might end up, I can imagine it being like a sort of a few inches difference between each sizes and for sure you'd find something that would fit beautifully within that. But this is also just me wishful With thinking having, that yeah, it's so never having, <laughs> having, having, I mean, I saw some of her stuff where she's like cutting paper to try and figure out how to get yeah. it all to sit together. I mean, it's, yeah. it's a, and that's Jocelyn. Like yes. she makes the most incredible stuff and she doesn't often publish it because she's really just, um, challenging herself yeah. and, and playing with ideas. Such an experimental exploratory attitude she has towards Absolutely. knitting and quilting as well. So yeah, so we're delighted to, to have these. Like this is such yeah. a such a treat to have these beautiful yeah. designs from her and the, the ones in the book too, which we'll get to, which are also yes. crazy complicated and beautiful. Yeah. So I guess I shouldn't get everybody's hopes up, including my own, for whether that sweater. sweater pattern will happen. But if it does, I'm making it. Yeah. Awesome. And then in terms of one other pattern, I don't, I didn't bring it with me, uh, that I didn't bring my sample with me, but um, I have a colorwork vest pattern that is pretty much ready to go. It's I want so to uh, proof it again. I do have a, a, a test knitter that I've been working with who's, who's given me the all clear mm -hmm. that everything's looking good. So that might be out by the time this podcast airs. That's the goal. Um, it, it's full of steaks. It has four steaks in it. So if you've ever thought about cutting your knitting, 
full. Come on an adventure. Arm hole, arm hole, neck. Neck, neck, back, back neck. Back neck. Yeah, both necks. Yeah, it's um, it's fun. Uh, so that's another Jolly DK pattern, and uh, yeah, hoping to have that out really soon. Hopefully you'll have seen it by now, because Steph, you should put a picture in. Okay, I'll put it right there. Here it is. <laughs> and I'm calling it the flagship vest. That's, uh, that's the working title. Okay, so that's our pattern stuff. And I have a whip. Should I show my whip? Yeah, look okay. out your whip. <laughs> it's also a Jolly DK whip. I can't get enough of this yarn right now. I have two projects at home in it as well. So, oh, and this relates back to the book. This is a book right. pattern. So one of the things about knitting all the samples for the book is that basically all of our knitting time and like all of our design brain went into this book mostly most of the summer. The summer was when we were yeah. really plowing through everything. I had a chance to release actually another one that I'm wearing, the macaron cardigan. I had a chance to release that simply just because I got the first round of design work done and then the like proofreading and tech editing happened other way around tech editing and proofreading happened through the summer so I got absorbed back into it I think I had I had a couple of renits in the summer I think that's why I was well, feeling so stressed this one, this too. one and then yeah. and then we wanted to get Jolly DK into the book so we renit one of the samples in Jolly DK amazingly I can't believe you pulled that off <laughs> it was a lot of um, <laughs> <laughs> but it was really sweet that, that we could yes because I'm really happy that this yarn is in the book but now I'm on like I want a version of every single thing in the book that's just for me to wear that doesn't have to live in the store that yes. isn't a sample it's just for me so my first one um, that I'm doing is Naomi's composition book sweater so this is on um, a, a tied TKB cord so I can't stretch it all the way out but this is the back so you can see it's really simple uh, beautiful uh, gray and gray stripe this is Jolly DK and sweatshirt uh, with uh, graphite gray but I can show you the front a little bit here um, so what's really cool is after I'm done all Shall of I this, get it? yeah, do you want to get it? Okay. I'll keep talking while you do that. Um, after I do all of this, I'm going to be applying some crochet embellishment and, um, you'll see it works like a margin in a, in a piece of paper, like those old school composition books that we used at school. So you can see there's like the perfect margin. And my plan is to actually use, a, um, embroidery to write the word LYS on the front of it in red so I can wear it when we're promoting the book. So cute. And I did these little like double stitch, oh, it's not double stitch, it's a crochet chain. The whole thing is a crochet chain and within the crochet chain at certain points when you cross the lines of the paper, you pick up another little scrap of yarn. So I did this in Cory Worsted and all our beautiful little scraps that we have left over from the fall skirts. skirts. Yeah, um, and, and leave But there's also a t-shirt version we'll show later that is, that actually I didn't even do the crochet chain on that. Yeah, it's just a striped t-shirt, um, it's beautiful. I'm thinking I want to do a version of this and actually just almost make it like a check and yeah, do a lot of like the crochet plaid. chains. So, and there's also, also the detail on the sleeve that runs down as well down the middle. So yeah, that's my so, whip. Yeah. I would like to have it in time for, our, which I don't think should be a problem, our book launch on the yes. 15th. And then we're going to have like a party here at the store on the 16th, which is a Saturday. So mm -hmm. we'll be here all day. We can sign books. We can chat with people and help them find yarn. So that seems like a really good day to have a sweater that literally has the name <laughs> of our book embroidered on it. And I have some projects on the way that I didn't actually bring with me, but I'm re-knitting the Caraway sweater, which is a co-work yoke sweater by Mona. And I'm redoing, I'm doing that in Jolly DK and Feederbrook Farms Entropy. You should bring that for the next episode. I will bring it for the next episode and we'll okay. show that, that pattern because it's almost done and I can talk about the modifications mm -hmm. I did in the body. Yeah. No spoilers. I'll tell you very <laughs> Yeah, we'll get back to that one. So that's my whip at the moment and I'm trying to stay focused on it because mm -hmm. I do really want to have it done. Yes. And I'm just not finding, I mean, there's been a lot going on, guys. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> haven't had a lot of time for knitting because we've been proofreading and mm -hmm. I've been right while I was writing up my vest pattern and so I just want to give myself all the time yeah. that I didn't give myself for some of those book samples to just take it easy and Definitely. knit like one repeat and then plus to be fair that is a bottom-up knit flat seamed sweater in the... stockinette <laughs> in stockinette mm -hmm. So um, the reason I did that for the book is it is something we get asked about a lot in store. Not everybody is knitting top down in the round sweaters. And you know, there's, it's great to learn a new technique. Learning how to do that will open up so many patterns to you if you want to knit that way. If you don't want to knit that way, you don't have to. And I wanted to include in our book a modern, uh, updated type of that traditional construction that I grew up thinking was the way you made the sweater. 
which uh, can have a lot of benefits too in terms of having a great structure and like a good fit with the seaming and like I don't know all sorts yeah, of, all sorts I, of I things. Mean, I love a seam sweater. Yeah. Um, there's some things that I tend to only want to do bottom up and only want to do seamed. And so I, I like to play around with mm -hmm. both. And I think it's like raglans or something I love to knit uh, from the bottom for some okay. reason. Um, I think it's like the short rows and the raglan increases at the same time. It's, it's too much where I'm like, I just want to do it in pieces and sew it up later. Yeah. And you have those nice straight seams so you can match a stitch the whole it's way. It's so satisfying. And it, it is really satisfying. So on this composition book, you match a stitch from cuff to hem and it's really satisfying. Yeah. So uh, that's where that design came from I wanted a knit flat bottom up pieced sweater in the book well I'm very it's been my favorite since day one like yeah. from the day you brought in the sketches that's been the one so that's my first one and I'm very excited about cute. it cute thanks cute. well I was talking about my whip the caraway I didn't actually bring it today don't know why what I did bring for some reason is a sock um <laughs> it's okay socks are cool socks count. like cool socks so um I kind of, I, what happened was I found my flexi flips, my Addy flexi flips, and I was like, ooh, I want to use them again. I'm going to make a sock. Um, so these are three, a uh, set of three needles. I'm using two millimeter for my sock. I'm finding that it's a little bit tighter, and I think I might experiment with slightly larger for socks, even though I've been using two millimeter for years. But uh, they are connected by a cable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So basically they're halfway between magic loop and DPNs. You have two joins per round, like Magic Loop, um, and you're working with just only three needles because the cable in the middle allows you that flexibility to continue in the round. So I find these so fast and motivating for socks, and you don't have to switch to a different kind of needle for the heel, whatever heel you're doing, like you would with the nine inch circulars. Although somebody in the store told me she does the whole sock on nine inch circulars and just works her short row heel on the nine inch circulars, sure, which I you can totally can do. Yeah. So basically I took some scraps of our Happy Four Ply Minis. I really love this kind of yarn for socks. Um, it is a blend of British breeds and it feels just a little bit more rustic. I know that that's like more absorbent before it feels damp. Um, yeah. In winter boots in Montreal, that's really important because even if your feet aren't sweating because it's too cold, snow can get in your boots and suddenly your feet are kind of damp and these really protect well against that, better than merino I find. And it's just so hard wearing. So I'm knitting this up with scraps. Um, I'll post the free pattern I'm using for this heel flap construction down below. I forget it off the top of my head, it's vanilla something. Um, this wasn't ever really planned as a project I would even talk about necessarily on the podcast, but so I don't have the details fresh to mind. Um, but it's a, I'm finding it a great pattern so far. And now I'm back in a sock knitting mode. So I am instantly attracted to these cute little bundles we have. Again, 75% wool doesn't specify which it feels it's nice and soft without being merino this these are by rico design and they are super soft super décadé. so they're a cute little as you can see uh gradient and each band i we put on our website well, have we talked about these before i don't know if we have i feel like i might have i'm getting deja vu about talking about how the little picture shows you what it's going to be like anyway it's okay it's a little picture that shows you what it's going to be like so yeah each one is 50 grams so you can you get two and then you have perfectly matching socks mm -hmm. but you know i really like these as in not so much into sock knitting anymore because i like that i can use the fade mm -hmm. without having to cut it in half i can you know i could even take this one and you know fade into that one yeah that would be which I cool think super fun or um if you wanted to do something like uh, our funnel cake sweater that steph designed with shelly bryant you could do that with, uh, with two, two of together. these and you just hold them together from the same end, so red with red, and you get that, yeah. that effect. Yeah, we love these also for like, you know, those beautiful fingering color work yokes where, you know, mm -hmm. one color is great and you just let the fade kind of yeah. come in and do the work for you. We photographed it for Instagram with the Junction sweater by Andrea yeah, Murray. Yeah, that's like a really perfect like example. Yeah. So yeah, these are great. And but I think I might actually do you, socks with them, who knows? I love it. This one is really calling to me. Yeah, I like it does, you know what? That would look really good with the Winkle mitts. It's in the Wouldn't same it? color Same thing. family with yeah. like pale green and the blue. Yeah, yeah. turquoise blue. Okay. So cool. those are super cute, super soft. Be really cute for baby stuff. Yeah, yeah. and washable, right? It's yes, like, exactly. Yeah, perfect. Soft enough. Softer than regular. So that's that. Uh, our book is not the only book that we want to talk about. We mm -hmm. have some 
book news. Um, you know what, maybe I'll start with the magazines. Yeah, sounds good. So, really sad news for our industry uh, last week that Pom Pom Press and Pom Pom Magazine are ceasing publication. So, if you are, have never seen a Pom Pom Magazine before, this is what they look like. They're just gorgeous, uh, beautiful paper, beautiful, really innovative, colorful, bright design. Um, Each of them are themed and they have really creative themes and I think every the curation of the designs responding to the brief of the theme are always um, unexpected and um, just have you rethinking things like tessellate yeah and rethinking the way stitches move and the way fabric behaves that innovative is the right word for it and um, yeah I mean if you're interested in sort of uh, what's behind that decision I would definitely will link to them and you can read what they uh, post on their website I really admire everything they said. They were really yeah. frank and honest about sort of some of the challenges facing print in particular mm -hmm. right now. Um, and I think the outpouring of emotion um, and gratefulness mm -hmm. on their Instagram uh, post is also a really interesting read. You see how many designers are thanking them for launching their career, for taking their first garment pattern. And like, I'm one of them. I was in this issue here with uh, my sanctuary tea. And like, I cried when I got that acceptance. It meant the world to me to be in this magazine. I am 100% sure that tons of people discovered me as a designer from this issue. And I'm really, really proud of the work that I did. I also, I really pushed myself because of the company that I was gonna be in, you know, like. Yeah. So anyway, it's sad. But the good news is we were able to secure from um, Julie Asselin, who distributes this magazine in Canada, a bunch of back issues, about five to seven back issues of most of the issues we got. I think we got about 13 of them. Yeah, I think we pretty much got from 29 through to 46, Yeah, uh, which was the previously published one. Um, a couple are missing. Some of the ones that were the most popular, and I think the print runs ran out a long time ago, the Dreamscapes yeah. one. And the Noragon. And the Noragon one, the font, was it? Flora, uh, it was dark. Nightingale. Night no, it was but I mean the theme. Oh, the theme. Actually, I don't remember. But the it was sort was. of a beautiful, beautiful dark floral um, kind of old masters. Uh, um, what am I? Uh, still life painting type. If you know Pom Pom, you probably know which one I'm referring to. And yes, the Nightingale sweater, cable sweater that you made was, yeah. was on the cover. Anyway, um, unfortunately, some of the ones that obviously the print runs ran out, we couldn't get. But we have a lot to help you fill in your collection or maybe you've had your eye on a pattern for a while and like most of these patterns are available as digital downloads but you just miss the, tact yes. the tactile nature of the book and they have beautiful workshops uh little oh the uh, articles and beautiful articles. the photography is amazing yeah it's interviews like recipes all sorts and even just the ads are so great i've discovered so many good like brands yarn companies, yarn companies yeah. that i want to try through the through the advertising so it all blends together is just like a handbook of discovery. And I think like a real a real time capsule, I guess, in a way, of a time in our industry. I could I could wax quite uh, nostalgic about it. I think I really would like to have I've got I've got my eye on some of these to fill yeah. out my own collection. I was a subscriber for a long time so I have a lot of them. Yeah. It's just yeah. I vividly remember this when I first started working in a yarn store in uh, a different one, not this one, in two thousand fifteen. I remember this coming to my attention and telling the the owner like I think this is onto something. I think you should start getting start, this magazine. Getting this magazine. And it was maybe um, it was a few issues in by that point. It wasn't new, um, but it was before their uh, anniversary edition with the Vera Valamaki's big yellow anniversary car anniversary yeah. cardigan on the front. Um, that was maybe the first issue I bought, and I don't know. They've just always been there in my knitting journey, like yeah. That oh, just some like such designers that I, that I discovered from them too, like mm -hmm. all the beautiful Sylvia Watts cherry intarsia and the round stuff that I was like, oh, I'm going to get to that. And then that feeling of having it go and going like, oh, I should have gotten to that. Mm -hmm. Of course, I can still access those patterns, but um, it certainly makes you go, oh, well, when was the last time that I bought an issue? And when was the last time I knit yeah. or shared on Instagram something from those pages? We have to loudly support yeah. the things we want to see continue in the world. Yeah. Anyways, I hope um, that we'll find something you're looking for. Uh, when they're gone, they're gone. That's all we were able to get. Um, so uh, 
and they they're here in store as well if you are local and want to come have a browse yeah and they they they're on for 20 canadian right now oh and i was just checking they do all contain download codes to get new book yeah i was just it's it sometimes it's a little piece of paper don't worry it won't fall out it's printed on the cover of each you get a unique download code for ravelry for the pdfs and then um we all do another restocky kind of book. So the other thing is um, we recently were so pleased to host Paula Pereira at the shop for a trunk show and uh, to sort of talk about her book, Textured Knits. So we have this back in stock. It was out of stock for a little bit. We have copies. They are signed by Paula as well. And sure. there's some beauty. Getting to see those samples in person, it's always wild seeing samples in person. It totally made the difference for me on a number of these that were already um, that were already humming away in the back of my mind, and uh, really kind of cemented it for me that they are that one of the. I, I was talking with someone there about the textured knits obviously coming through you can see in the stitch patterns but what you don't realize until you see them in person is the really thoughtful yarn choices that Paula made and so many different textures and all the beautiful yarns that he used so when you're looking through this for patterns I would recommend taking a deeper look at the yarn that each is knitted in and seeing its composition its structure and maybe trying to aim for something close to that because it is clearly front and center of her design choices for this book yeah yarn always is obviously designers are always thinking about yarns when they're designing patterns but the idea of this holistic look of the variety of yarns across all the patterns of the book is really something unique I think to this yeah this is one that I really love and it's in a a sort of more rustic yarn and actually one of our knit night attendees brought it along she was working on it um, like had a good chunk of the yoke done and put it along to work on while Paula was there. Yeah, it was really fun um, to hear Paula talking also about her inspiration, different artists that she was looking at, uh, work that they've done and how she tried to sort of be in conversation with that, um, you know, which is, it's awesome. It's yeah. just really lovely to hear someone talk about w- where their inspiration came from and so eloquently, where yes, I totally absolutely. got it. Like uh, the visual arts of Brazil and um, introduced us to a, a couple well, of artists couple that of we artists didn't know, yeah. I'm like, I have to go to the museum. I need to get my inspiration. I need to go to the museum. Totally. Um, and then uh, two other books that are new to our shelves. <laughs> Chat about that one. Sure. I was just, I have to put that away. I'm getting distracted. This is Grand Shetland Adventure Knits um, by Gudrun Johnston and Mary Jane Mucklestone. And uh, this is from Liner Publishing as well. And uh, this just, it's Wonderlust in a book. Um, I'm sure many of us have a bucket list item to go to Shetland. Um, This will really take you there while you're waiting for that plane ticket. The photography is just absolutely stunning. They were all on site for it. You can tell they feel really at home there and that they really know that landscape deeply. Um, And they have beautiful uh, explanation stories, notes throughout about that. Gudrun Johnston works with Simply Shetland, the um, American distributor for uh, Shetland, for Jameson's of Shetland. Yeah. So we've, since her coming into that role, we've um, been absolutely so impressed by the care she takes with like, we're a client, right? We buy in yarn from the distributor to stock and sell to you. And most, like all our distributors are great. You know, we can always get in touch with them. There's a reason why we continue working with them because they're great to work with. But the care and knowledge that Gudrun brings to that yeah. role totally gave me a new insight as well into her patterns. It's like, I knew I loved the Shetland trader. I knew she was incredibly skilled at Shetland knitting, but she's been just so great at like offering um, kit combinations. When yeah, color choices, color choices, all of this stuff. She's so expert at it, and we crossed paths and briefly said hello. And I was a little dark mm-hmm. at. Um, at uh, uh, the books, the Merritt Bookstore booth at Rhinebeck. Anyway, all that to say, like her expertise is just, even if you don't end up knitting any of these patterns, which just I'm sure you will, it. because there are some incredible ones, just reading it, learning from it in terms of approaching your own uh, color work projects, um, your own adventures, maybe into rustic and untreated wolves, and what she has to say about those, and, and I don't know, I'm very impressed. Well, and I love color work knitting. I mean, we both do love color work knitting, so it's really cool to see that um, in this book. But it's all very approachable, Mm -hmm. I would say. Like, 
it's all kept to sort of mostly puris, which means small, um, you know, so little elements in the sweater instead of it being like an all over color work, which mm -hmm. might feel a little intimidating. I think that if you are thinking about adding color work to your um, sort of arsenal, mm -hmm. you know, this is one where it is all over color work, but it's a really simple repeating pattern. Yeah. And just by changing out the color, you're getting all of that effect. So yeah. I think it's a very approachable color work book. I also yeah. want to sing the praises of uh, Mary Jane Mucklestone, whose books um, of of Farrell patterns, like she, you know, like 200 Farrell stitches have been super useful to me as a designer. Like the Folly Skirt would not exist without Mary Jane Mucklestone. So it's a partnership of two designers we really admire. It's a beautiful book. It's on the shelves now. Definitely worth looking at. And then finally, I've been seeing this book around for a while. In fact, I think I saw uh, a version in Latvian that Diana had a couple cool. of years with Diana Walla, who used to work here and is also a designer in the book. Um, so the cool format of this book, where you can see it's like a very interesting shape. It is an interesting shape. Is because every mitten in it is a full chart of the entire mitten. Cool. So you see the knitted version. I don't want to break the spine. Yeah. But yes. The knitted version is next to the chart version of it. So one thing I will say about using this book is you have to have a little bit of confidence to sort of launch yourself. The chart is what you get. Uh, so you've got to look at it and go, okay, so I'm casting on this many stitches and I'm ribbing for this long and then I'm changing color and it is very much not written in the style <laughs> to which we have become accustomed. This is like, also, it's chart based. where's my thumb? Yeah. But you can figure it out. <laughs> yeah, there is, I mean, there is some discussion about that stuff, but really it's like, just chart after chart after right. chart. It's um, Some of it with multiple colors per round. Sometimes, you know, you would be embroidering on top of mm. things. Sometimes you're knitting them as you go. Uh, and the nice thing is, is we have it in English and in French. So uh, <laughs> I've just basically said there's no writing in it. So I don't know how much it matters, but they do have, we have both languages. This is really, if you are looking to um, just level up your skills in terms of like, mastering how to adapt patterns on the fly not even adapt but like um read between the lines literally yeah. and um you know these are the front side of the mittens you will have to insert a thumb somehow but that is a very standard th formula for this construction of mitten and once you've got it you've got it and you can you can add thumb add to every them. single yeah. one of them right yeah and it's also it's grouped by region and explains a bit about like what those traditions are so if you're interested in that sort of knitting history as well it's, it's in here yeah. So yeah, oh. really just an incredible book. Yeah, knitting a thumb on trapeze, knit the le poignet avec des entrelacs. Like, sorry, I have the French yeah. version. So yeah, the, so the information you, is in here, but you, you have to basically stuff. read those sections, yeah. but then you're knitting from these charts that have, that are very minimal in their yeah. explanation. So really, you know, completing one of this would just be, you'd feel so satisfied, like such a triumph. Yeah. Really beautiful stuff. I, it's it's hard to really show you everything again. I don't want to split the spine, but um, we've got the listing up online, and we'll put some probably have some pictures. Actually, not that. sure it's up online yet. But okay. It will be by the time that this goes out in the world because we just got them in and yeah, we haven't yeah. had a chance to look at it yet. But um, it's, yeah, it's it's a really beautiful book. And like, again, with the holiday season coming mm -hmm. up, this might be a wish list item, yeah. something to add to your library, even if it is like more of an aspirational knit. Yeah, and you know? I bet. I'm realizing as I look at this, like any of these charts, it gives you the stitch count. You could, if you wanted to do a color work border on a hat mm -hmm. or the bottom of a sweater, if you wanted to just do the cuff of a mitten or put that color work chart onto a mitten that already exists, yeah, it treat it like a stitch library yeah, rather exactly. than like I have to knit this mitten exactly as it appears. And then you've got an incredible bank of, of stitch yeah, patterns. Yeah, resources and color yeah. combinations and all yes. of that. So yeah, I love this. And the difference of having it actually knitted beside to show you is phenomenal. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That was the first time I'd really dug into that actually to talk about it. That's I'm I'm blown away. I'm super. It's really this. beautiful. It's gorgeous. So yeah, I think that about wraps us up for for stuff to show yeah. today. Um, you know, one of the things that we're doing a lot of right now is making sure that we have lots and lots of the yarns that we did mm. use in the book, so that when it comes out, if you're looking for the materials to make it, we'll have lots on hand. So, you know, all our classic favorites, Dorera, Natura's, uh, Ulysse, um, Gilead, Cyrano, or Cyrano, yeah. uh, the Snefnug, yeah. uh, the beautiful uh, Zauberball. Um, we've still got tons of Make It Tweed in stock, but dwindling, I shouldn't actually say tons. Well, I mean, it goes. 
Uh, it, it goes like we sell some every day, but yeah. I, we do have enough that if you want to make this, oh, it'll last out the we've end of got the year. lots. Yes. So that's sort of our focus at the moment, yeah. and so you might not necessarily see tons new from us in terms of new yarns right now, but we're going to have lots of the yarns you're looking for. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's uh, maybe us up. yeah, a bit of a shorter one today, but a little, uh, bit. A little bit exciting stuff still. Yeah, really. We have exciting. to hold ourselves back from doing like the entire reveal of every book pattern. Well. Be yeah, I think it's coming. nicer this way because then we don't have to feel like we have to cut it short. We can really talk about yes, yes. each one and why why we made the design choices we did. And um, the other thing we're doing is like looking to book some little promotional things too. Like we are going to go to Toronto in the new year. We'll be at Vogue Knitting Live. Uh, so we're going to keep adding on some little places where we can bring all the samples so that you can see them. Even if you're not here in Montreal, mm -hmm. you'll get a chance to actually look at all those samples, try stuff on. Yeah. And, and check out how they're made. It'll be exciting. Yeah. Well, until next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you, and uh, happy knitting. Bon tricot.